yeah, uh, I think Chris, I think yeah, you you uh, uh, feel free to to start and and just a reminder, everyone, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you please post type them uh, and post them under the Q and A tab uh, at the at the very bottom. Okay, uh, over to you, uh, Chris. Thanks. Great, thank you, Paul. Um, so once again, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so we'll run through the first half result presentation and then followed by Q and A. Uh, so we'll go straight into the results overall. Um, so I think, uh, understandably, it was a bit of a challenging first half for the group overall. Uh, revenues were down 20% compared to uh, the same time last year. Uh, overall, we had lockdown in all of our major operating areas. Uh, Singapore, the circuit breaker started in early April. The UK and Australia started uh, at the end of March, so in the second quarter also. Uh, and for China, that was a little bit earlier, started around about February, but again, uh, all very much firmly in, in the first half there. Uh, on the operating cost side, as we were an essential service and everywhere we were, we did continue to operate mostly, apart from a couple of the smaller segments. Uh, but of course, when you're operating at a reasonable level, uh, it's difficult to, to mitigate on the cost side uh, too much. Um, however, uh, in response to that, we did receive uh, a large amount of government relief, uh, the vast majority of which came from Singapore through the job support scheme and the waiver of foreign worker levy, etc. Uh, so that helped to, to counteract a part of that. So overall, the operating profit, still a slight profit, but down 97% uh, compared to the same time last year. Uh, after taking into consideration uh, tax, etc. and minority interest, we posted a loss uh, for the first half of $6 million versus a profit in the same time last year of $146 million. Uh, in terms of the balance sheet side, uh, we re remain relatively strong, uh, very stable outlook. So our cash balances actually went up slightly. Um, the non-current assets and other, other assets went down more or less in line with depreciation, et cetera, and you know, AR, et cetera, with the lower revenue base and just general good collection. Uh, the liability side, similarly, we had a lower uh, cost base plus lower tax position from the lower profits, et cetera, so uh, they came down a bit. The equity position dropped by about 130 million, which is almost all due to the payout of the 2019 final dividend, uh, which we paid out in June uh, this year. Uh, so that was the main contributor to the drop. Uh, on the cash flow side, uh, we're still a very cash generating business overall. Um, we did about 240 million of operating cash flow. Uh, we did have the usual outgoings of CapEx, which is again, part of the long-term plan. Uh, We'll cover CapEx a bit more in a couple of minutes. Um, tax is, is just general unavoidable. Um, we did a small acquisition in the UK uh, for one of the taxi businesses in Liverpool. Um, but you can see the main outflow was uh, on the dividend side, which is not only the Comfort Delgro Group dividend, but also the minority uh, part of the dividends for some of our uh, other subsidiaries, such as SBS Transit and Viacom within the group. Uh, we had a little bit of repayment on the borrowing side as well, but uh, as you saw earlier, generally the cash the cash uh, balance on the balance sheet uh, went up slightly. Uh, with that though, we are still slight net debt position. Uh, it's come down to the borrowing repayment and the cash increase helped to, to bring that down a little bit. Uh, overall still very healthy um, on the gearing ratios, uh, very small net gearing. Uh, and we do also try and maintain adequate available facilities across the group in all of our different geographies. So we have, pro, you know, just shy of 700 million of uh, available banking facilities, which we can tap on uh, if necessary overall on top of the 600 million plus in cash. So on the CapEx side, uh, as you mentioned, this has come down quite a lot. Uh, we, we made a decision early to turn off the discretionary uh, CapEx. Um, we tried to, you know, be as prudent as possible. Uh, we do still have some essential capex ongoing and some general fleet re uh, renewals. Uh, and for example, we still maintain our objective of uh, having a fully hybrid taxi fleet by 2023. So there was still some spending on the taxi side. Uh, on the bus side, we try to, uh, you know, it depends on activity levels mostly, but we do still have some replacements going on. So we will still have capex in the second half, but we would expect it to be lower than uh, last year also. Uh, in terms of the geographic split, uh, Singapore is still uh, the number one region within the group in terms of uh, revenue generation. Uh, the UK and Ireland uh, still second place, uh, likely growth uh, after the 
decrease in Singapore, and Australia also slight growth after the decrease in Singapore, China minor reduction, uh, and the Vietnam and Malaysia are pretty much this pretty consistent. Uh, overseas wise, uh, they are contributing a bit more, but that's mainly due to the decrease in Singapore overall, which is again we'll come to in a bit more detail later. Uh, and this kind of shows just how dramatically impacted we were across all of our geographies. So uh, Singapore significantly down in terms of operating profit compared to this time last year. Uh, the UK and Ireland uh, posting an operating loss. Um, Australia again significantly down. Uh, China also an operating loss. Uh, Malaysia and Vietnam a uh, bigger operating loss than the same time last year. So overall for the first half we did uh, post a small loss with despite the government relief. If we didn't have that government relief it would have been a much worse position for sure. Uh, we had some impairments, mainly affecting our taxi businesses and uh, China businesses, which uh, we'll cover in a, a minute or two as well. Uh, so we have done some, as well, we've done a great reasonable testing as at the end of the first half, which we'll continue to review and refine depending on the development. Uh, so uh, we'll update at the end of the year. Uh, the government release in most geographies is continuing um, through until at least the end of the year, some into next year. Uh, Singapore has recently just extended also. Uh, and, uh, but again, it is at a reducing level, so it's a, a general step down across time as well. However, our balance sheet uh, is relatively okay, uh, and uh, I think overall, uh, you know, we, we do try and maintain what we can on the balance sheet side. In terms of the segments, uh, public transport is still our biggest generator. It has actually increased somewhat compared to last year, but that's mainly due to the decrease in taxi. We had rental waivers of varying degrees in Singapore and in China, and even completely rent-free in Singapore during the circuit breaker, and in some of the cities in China also. So uh, the taxi revenue understandably came down. Uh, public transport services were quite consistent uh, in terms of the operations during the lockdowns, et cetera. So uh, they took up that slack, uh, and the other smaller segments all uh, held a reasonably consistent overall most of of engineering down slightly because again it's tied to taxi and a, a smaller fleet size overall but um, you, you know it, uh, generally it's only slightly down you can see here though that taxi those rental waivers really made an impact so uh, taxi posted operating loss of 68.4 million in the first half uh, when you give away a discount or a full waiver um, there's not much you can do to offset that on the cost side so generally that flows all the way down to operating profit as you can see, a big reduction there. Uh, public transport also down just over 50%, uh, as were most of the other regions overall. Uh, sorry, segments overall. On the public transport side, uh, during the circuit breaker in Singapore, especially, we had up to 80% lower ridership than what we would have seen in a normal time. Uh, by the end of the first half, sort of July time, it was back up to about 50%, slowly tapering up, but it will take a while to recover fully. Um, in the UK, we moved to weekend schedules, so uh, Transport for London announced uh, that they were on Saturday schedules for a while, and then they dropped the Sunday schedules, um, and that was actually up until August this year, uh, when they've now reinstated back to full service. Um, I think Singapore is back to, was running it more or less full service, but again, with a, a much reduced ridership overall. Um, Australia, uh, generally speaking, the services were quite consistent, some minor impact overall. Uh, but nothing too dramatic. Uh, but the Aussie dollar impact uh, came in there to, to give us a slightly lower revenue, I guess, overall. Uh, the bulk of the government relief to the group, the 82 million we saw earlier, came from public transport services, which is very labor intensive and a, a very big operation. Uh, so that helped offset, uh, which turned an operating loss into an operating profit. So uh, before the government relief, we were actually posting an operating loss of about 7 million. The taxi side uh, is, again, quite severely impacted. So revenues were down 47% uh, when you give away full rental waiver for two months in Singapore, et cetera, and in China, it does really uh, take an impact overall. So uh, before the uh, government relief and impairments, et cetera, we were at an operating loss of just, uh, just short of 55 million compared to a profit of 58 million last year. Um, impairments triggered were on some of our uh, Vietnamese and Singapore assets. Uh, we did have a plan to replace a lot of our assets in Singapore, the diesel taxis uh, into hybrid taxis, but again, 
uh, some of these were accelerated and that triggered some impairments on the assets uh, currently. Uh, and similarly on Australia Goodwill, which uh, Australia was a very challenged taxi business originally anyways, um, with a lot of disruption from the ride hail companies. Uh, and then COVID kind of uh, made things worse. So overall, uh, some impairments were triggered from there. So uh, government relief did what it could to offset. Um, again, in Singapore, for example, the taxi drivers are not our employees, so we did not get any relief on that front. Uh, they did get self-employed benefits from the government directly. But again, uh, that's between the government and them. So overall, the government released about nine million uh, only offset a small amount, uh, and we still posted operating losses of about 64, 68 million. The automotive engineering side, um, again, is closely linked to taxis uh, and the taxi fleet. The taxi fleet was generally smaller than this time last year, uh, has been coming down. Uh, and again, we had to do what we could to support the taxi business when they were having these tough times. So uh, overall, still profitable, but uh, has come down. Uh, government really similarly helped to uh, mitigate some of that decrease. Uh, for the inspection and testing side, uh, Singapore on the vehicular side uh, held up quite okay. Uh, but during the circuit breaker, for example, the government did give uh, extension of six months for uh, for the, the annual car testing. So uh, that will be some deferrals in there. Uh, for the non-vehicle side, uh, there was a very big slowdown. Uh, a lot of our clients were on lockdown or uh, had you know, a reduction in services. So the, the non-vehicle side was, was quite strained and will take a while to come back. Um, we did recognize a couple of million impairments, but that's to do with one of our uh, our China business, which is uh, actually in a lot uh, facing a lot more challenges overall. So uh, there was some impairment on some goodwill in that, um, but Singapore generally still is doing okay. Uh, government relief likewise helped prop up slightly uh, for an operating profit of just over nine million. The driving centers were fully closed, they were deemed non-essential. So in both Singapore and China, uh, they were they were shut for the duration of the lockdown. Uh, and even then, uh, they didn't reopen on day one of the phase two. They actually took a while to get approval to reopen. So there was a, a reduction there overall. Um, it, China was felt a lot worse. It's going to take a while to recover. So there was some impairment triggered there, as you can see. Uh, but the government relief in Singapore helped to offset a little bit there. So generally, Singapore was holding okay um, apart, and then the China impairment tipped things into a lot. Car rental and leasing actually is an anomaly in this trend. So uh, the revenue actually went up compared to this time last year. Uh, we have a bigger fleet, although uh, the rent, the rates are actually under severe pressure. So you can see that actually the margin decreased. So it's a very competitive market, uh, and there's a lot of supply out there. Uh, so overall, the margins were thinner. Um, again, similarly, China, we had a uh, a business which is facing a lot more challenges, so we had to recognize some impairment on that, uh, and government release helped to offset a little bit there overall. Uh, the challenge for the car rent and leasing in Singapore will probably come in the second half um, when there's some, uh, you know, basically our clients are mostly expats on leases, etc. They may or may not be staying. We don't really know the long term uh, plan for those sides, um, and also we have a deregulation which will similarly affect the taxi side and the PhD side. Uh, which originally was supposed to happen in July, was then moved till October, and is now, we understand, being planned more for early next year. Um, so that will have an impact overall as well. For the bus stations, it was only, we only have one in China, uh, and I think we all know that there was not a lot of inter-region or city travel going on in China uh, during the first half overall. Uh, still managed to make a slight profit, and there was some government relief, but uh, dramatically done. Uh, this year compared to last year. So on the dividend side, uh, we did not declare an interim dividend uh, for the first half. We did post a loss, uh, and there is obviously a very large amount of uncertainty going on. Uh, just as we were releasing this, Melbourne went into full lockdown, uh, which is still continuing. Uh, there were resurgences in China and Beijing and Zealand as well, so uh, there was a lot of moving pieces at the time. Uh, however, the company does maintain its policy to pay out 50% of its uh, profit after tax and MI uh, in dividends, at least. Uh, I think historically we've paid 75 and 80%, et cetera. Uh, but overall, uh, with the uncertainty, we felt that it was best to play cautious for the first half and monitor the situation, and uh, we will declare a full final dividend at the end of the year instead. 
Uh, so as I just mentioned on the Outlook side, there was a lot of uncertainty at the time of the first half results, um, and there were very strong potentials for second lockdowns in some of the cities we were operating in, and even third lockdowns for some of them also. Um, I think now Australia has seen some of that. Uh, the UK is seeing a resurgence again now, so it's a, it, you know, it's a little bit uh, uncertain also. Um, Singapore has been sticking stabilizing and I think the numbers are quite well under control so uh, you know the community cases have been very low for the last few weeks and the total number of cases has been gradually coming down is you know below 100 for a while now so uh, the signs are, are positive but again um, we will need to watch this space closely and see uh, how things are moving especially in terms of the uh, government initiatives and directives in terms of social distancing uh, and safe, uh, safe space and etc from there so uh, we do uh, know that this will not go away, so we're trying to do everything we can internally and look at whatever internal cost structures we can uh, and you know focus on our own efficiencies. Uh, and we are looking at transformation and uh, building capabilities for, for growth going forward overall. Uh, so we do have a decent balance sheet, which uh, has been a luxury during this time. A lot of other companies have had some difficulties with banks, etc. So we've uh, managed to focus on our operations. Uh, and we are still well placed in the future for any potential opportunities for growth that come along uh, without getting complacent of the challenges that we're facing currently. Uh, so with that, that's the end of our presentation.